that's yeah. Showing, yeah full screen Great. okay so um i'm one of the coordinators for berry mutual aid group and we came about um as a direct result of covid19 um and luckily due to the foresightedness of abby wolf um, it was already up and we were already recruiting when the fourth, first lockdown came. Um, a central line was set up along with a um, Facebook page. And then later we also added Twitter and Instagram. Um, we leafleted like mad. We must have leafleted over 40,000 homes at least. We put posters up in um, the shops and the pharmacies. Um, and then initially, because of the sheer volume of calls and requests, it was complete chaos um, because we were also learning about the, the restrictions and, and all the different rules at, at the same time. Um, and, and in the early days, it was very much about prescriptions, shopping. We were delivering hot food to those who suddenly found themselves unable to do so. Um, we were access um, signposting, sorry, especially if places like food banks, um, people who couldn't get out and they didn't know what to do. Um, so we were um, also signposting. So things like um, citizens advice, different council departments. And actually, we made some very good contacts. Um, we decided to not become a constituted group because we felt that if we did, there would be bureaucracy in the way, etc. We didn't. We didn't really want that. Want that. We just wanted to be able to to do, um, sort of without having to wait for permission. Because essentially, we are neighbours helping neighbours. Um, we got around things like GDPR and DBS check, um, DBS checks, by not storing data. Um, we never went into anybody's house, um, although we do have some volunteers who were DBS checked um, and they were able to enter on the very odd occasion that it, it was absolutely necessary. Other than that, all COVID um, distancing measures were followed. Unfortunately, Berry Council and our local CBS really took exception to the fact that we weren't constituted to the point where we actually thought we were going to have to stop. Um, there was someone in the CBS who actually went around telling people that they weren't to trust us because we were crooks. And that was actually said. Um, but we have our own set of rules and policies, which anybody can look at on Facebook. So, you know, from a transparency point of view, it's all there. We have a fiscal host for any funding of which we, we've secured £400 the whole time we've been running um, and I believe we've still got 150 left and we even managed to get some well-being um, training which was open to all volunteers to sort of help them look after themselves and, and things as well. Then we sort of going on a little bit May, June time, we sort of settled down. Most of the teething troubles were sort of sorted out. And at the height, we had six call handlers, um, which all the calls went to the central line. We had 10 area coordinators. We had over 70 volunteers and one DBS handyman. We corresponded mostly through WhatsApp. Um, we had a call handler coordinator group and then a coordinator volunteer group for each of the 10 areas. Um, but we would also use mobile or online so that anybody who didn't use um, social media wasn't left out. Um, and, you know, we had quite a few queries of what could we do? Could we do this? What weren't we allowed? And we somehow always managed to resolve those problems. In fact, really nice team. Um, so May, June, still busy, but more manageable. And we knew what we could do. And the citizens were also more knowledgeable about things like shopping online, getting pharmacy prescriptions delivered to them and, and so on. Um, we worked on the basis that we accepted all requests um, unless they were deemed dangerous for some, some reason. And we just worked on the assumption that everybody who 
you know, phoned us, was honest, and, you know, um, they really needed whatever it was. Um, we did other things like we donated a microwave to someone who didn't have any way of cooking. We donated a TV to a lady who's who's broke and um, bless her that was the only way she could sort of see the outside world and we picked up other items like false teeth and glasses um we got to know regulars really well um and we would also stop at the door so whenever we drop stuff off we would stop at the door and have a, a good chat usually the you know a lot of these people were were in you know in isolation or isolated and um we could also by doing that find out any other needs that they might have which we could hopefully signpost them to um and we would also provide comfort calls for anybody who wanted them um our handyman would do things like changing light bulbs for people who weren't able to do it themselves uh, we even had him changing casters on a bed for an elderly couple who couldn't do it. And we even managed to help a homeless man get emergency accommodation. And the last time I heard, he actually has now got a home. Uh, one of my lovely volunteers got to know a blind couple um, very well. So both of them blind elderly couple. And she was a trained, she is a trained nurse and she would clean. The lady was is called Rachel and she had all these weeping sores on her legs but of course she couldn't see them so um she's called louise she she went in and and she sorted that out and they actually ended up having a bake-off competition um we also did things like confirm deliveries for them because obviously they couldn't see the deliveries and one of them were covid tests so that they knew that they'd arrived. And we would do other things like put their bins out for them because of course they didn't know which one was which. I don't know what they did before all this. Um, it, it does make you wonder. Um, so then we into the new year. So by the third lockdown, of course, we were starting to lose volunteers because people were going back to work, but we were less busy anyway. Uh, and it was mostly down to our um, core regulars really. Um, but then as the COVID vaccine started to be rolled out, we were asked by Age UK to help people to and from their um, vaccine appointments. Um, we also provide lifts for other appointments such as the dentist and eye checks. More recently, we've collaborated with Radcliffe Market, which is my area actually, um, Kindberry, and the Elephant's Trail, who are two other not-for-profit companies. And we have designed a slow shop model. So those that have access to the internet can order online. Um, or we've got dedicated call handlers who will take their call over the phone. Uh, and we're using that as an opportunity to be a listening ear where we will actually encourage conversation with anyone who might want to. Um, and also it may lead to further signposting. There's no minimum spend. Um, so once the order is taken, it will go to the person who processes it. They will get the shopping for them using the stalls on the market and other local independent shops uh, wherever we can. It's then delivered to the door where the shopping can then be paid for by cash or card. Um, and it's, it's being run on a purely voluntary uh, basis and if it does look like it'll be a success we're hoping to make it into a more of a permanent thing with some very flexible paid posts so you know if you can only do a couple of hours it, it, it's absolutely fine and hopefully then turn it into some sort of community um, this community thing that's run by the community uh, and then we're also looking at the space in the market because it's got very large space to hopefully put on some social gatherings um, once we're able to. So what does the future hold for us? Um, we have entered into some collaborations, starting with uh, the National Dem um, Democracy Movement, uh, got to know Simon and Angela. And then more recently, we've um, started the Greater Manchester Movement for Community Power. And then <laughs> in Berry, we are just starting tiny micro Berry neighborhood movements. So as you can see, we're neighbor these neighborhood democracies are taking over. Um, so it, it is very early days though. 
but we're hopeful that the interest that's sort of been generated and the energy that, that Paul was talking about means that communities might be able to start, uh, you know, making the, the, the decisions that affect them, you know. And lastly, um, as a, a mutual aid group ourselves, we're going to carry on, albeit there's a lot smaller numbers now, but we have a lot less requests, which we think is a good thing anyway. Um, hopefully it means that people are getting the help that they need. But we have recognised that there are people who are still falling through these gaps and we want to make sure that we're there for them. Um, and that's it. <laughs> so I don't know if there's any questions.